Hello everybody and welcome back to Wexcom Manor Farm. We've got just one log left to sell. So here goes, into the fire. And that gives us enough money now to be able to rent a windrower. Because this was really, really highly requested. To do the windrowing at the same time as mowing. I agree because it is quite a big job doing the mowing. So having the windrower following us is obviously going to be very handy. So that's where we're going to go to, the store to lease this windrower. The problem is I have already started the field so I think what we're going to have to do is row up what we've already done and then after that we will continue with Matty Ferguson which is just there. We've parked it up. The thing is though the working width of the windrower doesn't need to be too big. It doesn't need to be bigger or wider than the mowers. I don't know the total working width of the mowers but it's not going to be bigger than the smallest windrower that we own so we really don't have to spend much money here a good request as well was to do probably 75% silage and 25% as hay so I think we're going to do that as well which will mean that we just have to leave a section which isn't rowed up I did initially think we could do that with the headlands but then it would probably be too tricky trying to avoid them as when we turn with the mowers the windrower is going to follow us, it's going to be a bit of a mess. So yes, it's going to have to be rowed up and then we'll just leave a section at the end which is going to be turned into hay. Now this video probably isn't going to be terribly long just because this is the only job I've already got planned to do today. I'll try and make up for it in a future video. But yeah, let's just go on to here and we will see the... <laughs> Where's it gone? Windrowers, there we go. Right, okay, so yeah, we do have the smaller one, I forgot about that. That is probably too narrow, 4.6 metres. This one is 9.3 metres. What I will do is check and see what the working width of these two is. That's 3.1 and that is 3, so that's 6.1 metres. Okay, so yeah, they're both sort of not right, but the GA9531 is going to be the closest to it. It doesn't matter if it is just a bit too wide. So let's just go with it, select it. It's going to cost, unfortunately, £3,080. But that is soon going to be brought back to the uh, farm's bank balance by uh, selling the silage at the end of it. So all is not lost. That is good. The price I put down for silage, which was four to £500, one person said it wasn't realistic. They said more like 350 but 350 isn't that much less really than 400 so I think we are going to stick with 400, but yeah, if, if everybody else thinks that 350 is more realistic, then yeah, we'll go with that. Thing is, you see, we could act as if it's a great demand, and then we would progress this farm a lot further. It's not technically cheating, because it, it really could be a great demand. If we only had one mower, we would have used the single windrower. It would have been cheaper as well. But because we have managed to buy this rear mower as well as the front mower, um, yeah, it's, it's going to speed the process up and it means we can have the bigger windrower, we can get the job done faster. To be honest, I really wouldn't have wanted to mow this field with just one mower. It would have been deadly slow. It would have been painful to do and to watch. So we are going to have to move the Massey Ferguson out of the way. Just so we can row this up first of all. Okay. So that is the gate shut. As for this tractor, we'll put it where we haven't cut yet. So let's just fold things up. And... I probably will time lapse the rest of this mowing because it is going to be a fairly big job. I think it took about 15 to, yeah, 15 minutes to do the headland, so we still have all of that left to do. There's a good 45 minutes here, I'd have thought. Maybe half an hour. Right, so we'll turn the beacons off. We don't need to have those on. And we can begin. Now the only thing which is a little bit harder to do on this map is the colour of the cut grass texture. 
it is exactly the same colour I think as where we've already cut so it makes it quite hard to see the windrow although when it is rowed up it is a lot clearer much easier to see on video it probably is harder but no I can live with that, that's alright it's just when it's cut like this it's pretty hard to see then we also have some grass at the house to cut that will be in a future video obviously not with a tractor I do have a plan for that so stay tuned for that video well the start of that video it's probably going to take about five minutes to do um, but yes it does need to be done it's a mess the house is not being maintained correctly anyway I'm going to continue doing this and when I've got back to the tractor again after doing probably what would it be three headlands I will see you again very soon oh look, there's our new Holland tractor with the sprayer and our potatoes this potato seems to seem to progress pretty well good potatoes okay so we have almost finished the headland I had a bit of a think about it while we were doing this and I think really if I just keep following the mower with this until we get probably to well it's gonna to be to the center because I'm gonna go around the headland just keep going round and round it's not always the easiest thing to do but I think with this field it might be so yeah when we get to the center we just stop the windrower then the rest of it can be tedded for hay I think it's gonna work quite well anyway let's just run this bit up here and then we can set follow me up and we'll be able to continue there we go right let's drive back over here it's very clear now to see where the grass is this is going to be fantastic I, I haven't really decided what we're going to use it's either going to be a loading wagon or a forage harvester obviously a loading wagon is much cheaper and unfortunately we'll probably have to use one of those just because well look at our bank balance we have £1,242 not very impressive at all plus we're about to have worker fees so yeah it's going to be pretty tough to be able to even afford to lease a forager but who knows we might suddenly win a lot of money highly unlikely right so that's going to go there now for the mowing tractor the 5613 we'll set this going as well right okay so what we're going to have to do is get this all going and then it should follow us okay Off we go. Also, I try not to miss anything. Now, what we are going to notice here is that the windrow, the swath, is going to be much smaller because it's going to be taking in much less. With the headlands, it's taking in four rows of grass from the tractor, whereas this time it's obviously just two. see how it goes. I'm going to do a time lapse and see you in a minute or two. Can you be cold hearted when you get that fire burning up inside it? Never running that love, love, love when you get
Okay, so I'm uh, getting on pretty well here. What I've done is I've set the windrower to actually bring in the other swath. Most of the time it does do that okay. Um, it's just sometimes if I don't drive straight it doesn't do very well. But you can see most of it is looking okay. Either way it's going to turn out okay. So yeah, I'm just going to continue do most of this off screen. And yeah, when we get to the stage where it means not wind joy anymore, I'll do another bit of recording. And I'll just film that. And then really, we do need to get a loading wagon. I didn't think it was going to be today, but this video is going to be way too short, I think, without it. So if we can just do a load or two, obviously we have to be able to afford one. That is going to be the tricky part. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've got to the stage now where we have become in a position where it's too hard to have a worker doing the rowing up around these obstacles. So I think what I'm going to do is just continue myself. This section here in the middle may well be just hay, in fact it probably will be. So that is, for the time being, it for the wind drone work. Although, this is going to be done quickly as we're leasing the wind rower so it doesn't want to be hanging about. So yeah, what we're going to do is just get this cut very quickly then we'll be taking this back to the yard and then if we can afford to, which is unlikely, we will get a loading wagon and we will pick some of this up. It's going to be quite a big job. That's the problem with jobs like this, you see. It makes it quite hard to do a video because so much of it is just edited out. I could record the whole lot, but it would be an hour long video of just doing the same stuff, which would be pretty boring. So yeah, I think probably shorter videos, even though they are shorter, would be better because you are at risk of being bored to death, which is never a good thing. Okay, so that is this section down here completed. Let's just spin round, finish off that with there. Also around the pylon just up here, I think it's a pylon, there is quite a bit which hasn't been done. So we just need to do this uh, without having the worker following us, because having the worker following us is terrible when you get to a place like this, it just crashes directly into it. Okay, so here goes. Of course, we don't want to crash into it either. I almost did. Need to get as much as we can do. There we go. And finally, this section here, and it soon becomes clear where we haven't rowed up, it looks totally different. Okay, so that is the field finished. Fantastic. I don't know how long it took. I don't think it was quite as long as I thought. Um, but yeah, it still wasn't exactly a five minute job. So what we're going to do is head back to the yard. We'll put this on Follow Me. And we'll drive the new Holland tractor. And yeah, what we're going to do is just check and see exactly what we own. Because if there's something we don't necessarily need, somebody said that we have way too many tractors, which is true. We have more than I ever thought we even had. Because uh, we've got the fence as well. The sensible option would be to get rid of a tractor. We always seem to have one just sat about. Which is no good, really. The T5 was the obvious choice, but that is now perfect for spraying. Plus I upgraded its wheels to have row crop tyres as well. So the T5 is definitely not going to be sold. The Matthew Ferguson equally is not going to be sold because I've already got rid of that on Cobra Farm. I do want to have at least one Matthew Ferguson. <laughs> it is my favourite tractor after all. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. Yes, I think I have done. Just a few times. So uh, yeah, really, we will see what we've got. If there's a tractor which stands out to us which hasn't really done much work recently, we'll get rid of it. Otherwise, we're going to have to think of a plan B. So if we go on to the garage, just here, got a T5, so we're not getting rid of that. This tractor's been very handy, Massey Ferguson, no. And the case, that is our cultivation tractor. We then have the Fent, which I don't really want to get rid of either, so, oh, that is so annoying. Yes, is there anything else we could get rid of? We have a lot of front weights. An awful lot of front weights. We definitely don't need quite so many. 
but which one do we get rid of? This one here. I think we'll keep the rest. What else do we own? Okay, so we've got a plough. The plough is probably not going to be used at the moment. If we do use it, it will likely be a larger plough on the case tractor. So that is what we're going to sell. And that will be more than enough money to be able to afford to buy, or at least lease, the loading wagon for any tractor actually. It shouldn't be too heavy. So what we're going to do is stop that there, reverse this tractor into the shed. suppose it should be in here. We need to lower the back mower. There we go. And then we can put the windrower into this shed here, into this barn. Good. So we'll detach that. And yes, finally, we'll pick up the plough and sell it. It is just too small for this farm. So this farm is a bit unusual, really. To me, it feels, it comes across as quite a small farm. But then when you look at the size of the fields, it's huge. So a four furrow plough for us is just a bit too small. We are going to, when we can afford it, upgrade it to a bigger plough. How are the cows doing? I haven't really checked up on them. I hope they're okay. Oh, what is that? Got great demand on something we don't even have. Soybeans. Oh, that is so disappointing. We'll have to plant some soybeans at some point. Yes, they're all okay. Productivity is fairly low. Apparently, when you give them power food, you automatically give them silage and hay. I have been told, so I'm hoping it's true because that will obviously be very good on us. Makes it much easier. So bringing it over to the store gives us, it used to be a 20% bonus, I'm assuming it is the same in FS17, it was 20% extra in 15. The issue is finding the trigger, seems to be back here more, so I'll put it here, hopefully that is where it's going to be, we will see, nope, there we go, All right we'll sell it £13,396. So we can now afford to lease one of these. They're very expensive. And because we've got such a large field there, it needs to be at least the Bergman Repex here. The Repex 34S. Um, how much is that to lease? You see, even this is £7,480. That is astronomical. That is so expensive. This tiny one is still 3410 Wow, that is that is just so expensive, I can't get over it. Maybe, no it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be cheaper to get a forager. Um, but yeah, that is extortionate. We're gonna have to do it though. The good thing is, the silage is still worth a fair bit. So we're easily going to make a good profit here. Off we go. Looks a little bit too big for the tractor. But we'll try it. I think the case may be required here. We've got a lot to pick up. I think today we'll do one load with this tractor and then in the next episode we'll finish it all off and we'll use the case, we'll swap the tractors over. It just saves us from having to go back to the yard today and faff about swapping it all over. Also in the next episode we're going to have to get the tether out to turn over the grass. At the moment it's drying, it's baking in the sun. Uh, then we'll turn it over to the other side and then we'll row it up and bale it for hay which is going to be good because the cows do need hay but yeah like we say um, the turtle mix ration should cater for the hay section as well but hay is part of the power food so yeah it should just do it all in one go that is the plan Right, we'll start with this swath here. It may well get bogged down because of the amount there is here. 
we have collected up a great deal. It should take seconds to fill. Yeah, look at that rate. The rate it's filling. One thing's for sure, there is a lot of profit to be made here. Which is what we desperately need. I don't think I've ever done quite so badly as I have on Wex Commander Farm. It's a tough map, very tough. I'm playing on normal difficulty. Sixty-three percent already. Wow, we're we're not even going to do half of a headland before we fall. I am so pleased I didn't get the smallest one. Of course, anything I miss, I will pick up later. We need to get everything we can do here. Just like a meter in length of this is probably, I don't know, the equivalent of maybe twenty pounds, maybe even more, because there is so much in there. Eighty-eight percent. Almost there. Oh, better not miss the corner. Ninety-four. It's feeling heavy. Although it has done very well so far. Ninety-eight. And finally, ninety-nine percent. Finished. So yeah, we did about half. I'd say that was pretty much half of a headland. Incredible. We'll take this back over to the silage pit. Some of it is going to be fermented. Well, it's all going to be fermented. Some of it is going to be kept. Because we do need it for feed. But the majority is going to be sold. You know what? I don't think we need to swap it over to a different tractor. It's doing so well. I didn't look at the recommended horsepower. But this tractor is more than capable. Here we are back at the yard. Now I believe we have two silage pits. Hoping to cram it all into one. We'll put it in the closest one to us. And we do need to distribute it fairly evenly, but most of it needs to go to the back. There we go, perfect. Doesn't look like too much when it's in the pit. But that is it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, looks like there is another job there which needs to be done. Clearing up the cows, they have made a bit of a mess. Uh, but yes, that is it for today. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and until next time, bye for now.